Добрый день! С вами Светлана и мои арт-диалоги. Сегодня я вам представляю медиапроект Verbier Talks 2019. Это был мой первый проект как продюсера, и мы его осуществили совместно с талантливой ведущей Екатериной Соколовой и Music Passion. В течение трех недель мы погрузились в необыкновенную атмосферу фестиваля, посетив более 70 концертов и множество мастер-классов и всяких мероприятий. Нам удалось взять эксклюзивное интервью с некоторыми артистами, которые я хочу вам представить. Добро пожаловать в закулисье в Эрбье фестиваля. Сегодня в гостях у нас Даниэль Хоу. Встречайте! Включили запись? Yes. Да? Мы будем говорить по-русски? Нет. Жаль. Цепите. Цепите, да. Чуть-чуть. Чуть-чуть. Как я уже сказал, я надеюсь, мы будем интервью с мастером Хоуп. Я не слышал этого раньше. О, действительно? Я очень счастлив. Спасибо вам большое, что вы принимаете интервью. Спасибо. And uh, I would say a redhead uh, rule. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's a good start. So, uh, I have quite many questions, but I will choose. Um, first is about Verbier. Mm -hmm. How many times did you visit Verbier? And what is coming to Verbier for you? I think uh, this is my fifth visit um, to the festival. Uh, I come every two years. Oh. And um, it's the most beautiful place. I mean, look at this incredible view. We have an unbelievable place for an interview. It's amazing. It's you know one of the most beautiful areas um, in the world, and Switzerland in any case. You have these mountains, you have the air, you have the nature. And then, of course, you have this incredible festival which started very very small and has now become one of the biggest and most important festivals in the world and what other festivals have this amount of great musicians every day I mean it's like uh, every day you have caviar and um, you know steak with truffles and it's like every day there's something amazing you don't even know where to decide because everything is so special <laughs> so uh, it's also very special for us artists because you know we travel all the time we go to festivals and then we leave and we don't usually meet each other and mm -hmm. here you meet each other here ah. you I went to the concert this afternoon and there was um, Mr. Trifonoff was sitting there mm -hmm. and uh, you know um, Mr. Kissin is here and it's everywhere you go you meet your colleagues mm -hmm. and um, that's very special and the dinners after the concerts you have the parties um, after the concerts everybody meets and, and hangs out so it's an, a fantastic combination of great music great friends and this wonderful atmosphere I know that you make how many concerts do you have a year about 130 do you have some particular performances performances which you consider the most uh, important, the most for you? Uh, not really, because I, I take every concert very seriously. And it could be a concert in a very small place, a small village, or it could be a concert in Carnegie Hall. Um, every concert is for me is a, is a privilege, because I love to do what I do. And I, I have to think, you know, I'm very lucky to be able to, to have a passion which I can make as a, a job. It's, it's not a job for us, it's life. So, um, there, of course, there are certain concerts that become highlights for you, or where you think, you know, wow, I wish we could do this again. There are certain partners that you collaborate with. I mean, this year there have been already so many highlights. Uh, I mean, just one for me, the first time to play with uh, Gegiev. We played together in Baden-Baden two weeks ago for the first time. We never met even. And then we go on stage and play a concert. So that, uh, of course, was very special for me, uh, first time. But also last night here, I played with artists for the first time. Mm. You know, fantastic young musicians, 20, 23. Um, I will do a, pro a project now with Thomas Hampson and an actor from Germany. 
again first time so again that's very important so it's really every every time is something special I have the same feeling of energy uh, and the highlights if you can choose from the entire life <laughs> <laughs> you know th there are certain moments that you remember uh, the first time I played with the Yuli Menuhin uh, the first time we gave a concert together when I was a small boy or my first time in the Beaux-Arts trio with Menachem Pressler with my debut in Carnegie Hall uh, my debut at the proms in London and the Royal Albert Hall um, when I played at the Hollywood Bowl for the first time 20,000 people or I played once in Nuremberg for 80,000 people that's the most I ever played for and that is I mean it's incredible you know I just um, there were so many people you couldn't your brain could not even understand how many people there were it was just incredible so th there are moments like that but then also I remember concerts in very small places a tiny church in a village for 30 people were also incredibly special for me so there's there is never a rule it's just always different can you tell me about um, modern composers uh, contemporary contemporary mm -hmm. composers I know you play many new and premieras and mm -hmm. so on uh, it's a serious question what advice can you give to a person maybe even not musician how we can recognize either this a good piece or not how could I understand it that's a very good question a very difficult question to answer you know I think that um, the interpreter the musician I think they have a big responsibility because if they love the piece of music then they have a chance to share that with the audience the way I do it is if I have a piece by a composer I talk to the audience I explain to them the story behind it or the story of the composer or why I love this music I try and help them a little bit like when you go to um, a museum and you look at modern art mm -hmm. you have two choices you can go and you can look and you could say okay I don't understand or I like it or I don't like it and you can leave or you can take the headphones from the museum and you can listen and they say well this painting was by this man or this lady at this time because he felt like this and this is the and suddenly you look at the piece of art and you have a different feeling understand it maybe you say I still don't like it it's possible but at least you have a chance to understand why it's coming together and so I believe that is the way for me personally to present contemporary music is to tell a story and I look for composers where I have the feeling that the music also tells the story there are many composers out there um, composers like Thomas Adez or uh, Mark Anthony Turnage but there are also composers like Max Richter who touch people without any explanation. And I like to, to balance my love of contemporary music between these composers like Adez, Schnittke, Ligeti, Kurtag, and Max Richter and the, what they call new classics. Because I think music is for everybody and music is to share. And my job as an interpreter is to try and share this music. Uh an idea which came just uh, it seems that some composers are dealing through intellectual process and some for me it's uh, romantic music of course uh, through emotions uh -huh. uh, the project for which we are doing an interview calls music passion club uh -huh. and for me uh, it is I feel that music has to touch you with emotions mm -hmm. so you you must feel something but still there are many pieces which are only intellectual mm -hmm. what do you think of all of this interaction I mean I agree with you that's my personal feeling is I look for music that touches me emotionally but um, there is great great music out there which is written with a different approach an intellectual approach I just don't believe that 90% of the people will understand it without some kind of explanation. 
And there I have arguments with composers, because some composers say, no, it's not your job to explain, it's your job to play. <laughs> and I say, well, that's your opinion, but I think people, if you play a piece of modern music, you have to listen to it more than one time. And you have to encourage people to get involved in the music, and they can't if they just come cold to a very intellectual piece the chances are they will forget it and will not want to go in again. Mm -hmm. So I believe the interpreter is really responsible for sharing and for helping in the success of the contemporary piece. I know you do not only classical music, but as well you like jazz and some other genres. Yeah. Uh, how it happens, if this is the first question, what do you like more, how it happens, and uh, the main thing, uh, I've heard that... What do uh, I like more? You mean uh, um, which, which, which genre? Kind, or, which genres are um, closer to you? I see. Okay. I've heard that some um, people like to put musicians in shelves. Yeah, categories. This person yeah. is playing only 18th century music. Yeah. This one is only contemporary and so on. How do you uh, combine this? Mm -hmm. And what do you think about all of this? Yes. You know, I, I'm, I'm not a big fan of shelves. There are structures around and people like to find labels. They like to do this. I, I, that's never really interested me. I've always been interested in great music. I've never made a difference between what genre that is. If I hear a great musician, that could be a rock musician, it could be a jazz musician, it could be Indian music, it could be folk music, it could be, uh, different types of country music. I don't love every style. I'm not a huge fan of techno music. I'm not a huge fan of acid or house, acid jazz. It's not, <laughs> it's not my favorite, you know. I'll listen to it a little bit. Um, I find some of the pop music today is terrible because it's like mass produced, soulless, and it's empty, it's terrible. So that there is music for me which is like, um, like bubble gum, like chewing gum. But, generally, I think in every genre, there are fantastic musicians. And when I hear something, I go, ah, oh, wow, what's that? And I want to discover more. And that's why I started very early to play Indian music, to play jazz, to play um, bluegrass music, um, Irish jazz, uh, Irish uh, folk music, Scottish music a little bit, klezma also. And the violin, I think, it helps because the violin is one of the most versatile instruments. The violin, you can do so much. You can play Indian music, you can play jazz, you can play the Irish stuff, of course. Not <coughs> every instrument can do this. A piano, jazz, of course, yeah, but... Cello also. Cello, but you, you know, it's, it, the violin is so flexible. So that helped me. And then I was lucky to be, to grow up as a boy, very close to a great, great violinist, Yehudi Menuhin. And Yehudi Menuhin also believed in embracing other cultures and music. And he worked with Ravi Shankar, he worked with Stefan Grappelli. And as a kid, I got to see these people and hear them and listen to them and see Menuhin play with them. And so I, I saw what it's like when these worlds come together. And I never forgot that. So I just said from, from the time I was 10 years old, I want to play music. I didn't say classical music, I said music. Mm -hmm. And classical music is is the most important part of my life, but it's not the only part. Could you tell us a couple of uh, words about your book, about promotion of classical music? My book. I've written four books. Oh, so I'm so know. sorry. I'm right. just not, <laughs> one. One is um, translated to Russian. In Russian, yes, so that's right. That's why I know. That. When do Could I applaud? Tell? When do I applaud? It's called. Yeah. Um, I, I wrote a book. This was back in 2008. I think I wrote this. That's, that was my second book, mm -hmm. and it was called When Do I Applaud? Mm -hmm. And the idea was um, to write a book for people who are not necessarily from the music world, but to tell them why are classical concerts so fantastic, and to explain the rules, mm -hmm, the so-called mm -hmm, rules mm -hmm. and the regulations. And this book has been very successful and has had many translations, including mm -hmm. in Russian. And I'm, I'm thrilled that um, it's had a Russian translation because Russia has been very important for my musical development. All my violin teachers were all Russian. So f really from the time I was eight years old until I was 20, 
I only study with Russian mm. teachers. So um, it, it's given me a, an incredible background and a, f a foundation in terms mm -hmm. of playing. But I also, like other kinds of music, I decided very early on that I wanted to do more than just play the violin. And I love to write. And my father is a writer himself, and he always encouraged us to write. And um, I started to write about music, and I discovered it was a great way to balance the emotion of playing. Because you play, you play, you play, you play, and you sometimes the emotions of these pieces are so big, you have no way to filter them. And the best way to filter for me is to write. <laughs> And so I started to do this. I was writing booklet texts. I was writing for magazines. And then one day I thought I would write a book about classical music and to try to reach out to more people to get them to come to the concert. And that's how it happened. Do you have hobbies or you have enough to do already? Well, I have, I mean, the most important part of my life is my family. Oh. Uh, and I have two uh, boys, two small boys. And with my wife, that's my hobby. That's my my life. So, whenever I'm not playing music or at a festival, I'm with my family. Mm -hmm. So I every second I can get to go home or to bring them with me, that's for me the most important thing. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you from families. <laughs> um, yeah. What kind of music do you, do you drive? I do drive. Yes. <laughs> When you are driving. When I listen. <laughs> what do you listen? Um, I usually listen to. Um, Well, it's it's, it's mixed mixture. I use uh, 80s rock. I love 80s, you know, 80s What? pop. Oh, I mean everything names. from some names. Okay, um, so I mean I love Prince. I love um, I like the English pop. I like um, Duran Duran. I like Sting. I like The Police. Um, I like. Uh, I mean, my, my music. Uh, taste is so wide. I mean, I, I love the Beatles. I love the Rolling Stones. I love the soul and funk of the 80s, 70s, and 80s. Um, you know, the Supremes, Diana Ross. I mean, you name it. It's <laughs> it's, it's really open. We remember. <laughs> We remember. Uh, two more questions. Yeah. Um, you travel a lot. Yes. What places we should visit for sure? Just in general, you mean? In, no, ge uh, in the whole world, <laughs> except Verbier, except we're already here. <laughs> um, what Another a couple. What a it. question. Um, I mean, you know, I live in Berlin. I think Berlin is an amazing town. Uh, it's a crazy town. It has a crazy history and um, many contradictions in Berlin. But I think it's a wonderful place. I think London is an amazing town. Um, I think New York is an amazing city. Um, Maybe some unknown things. Some unknown things. Um, there is, uh, if you don't know, the, the town of Meran, Merano. It's uh, mm. in Sutiro. Mm -hmm. It's between Austria Italy. and Italy. It's magnificent. South Africa is where I was born. There are some beautiful places there. Uh, very um, sort of quiet coastal towns that you can go. I mean, the world is full of amazing places. Uh, you have many roles. Uh, who is Daniel Hu? Whom do you feel yourself? Who are I you? have no idea. Oh, really? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, um, I'm, I'm a musician. I love music. I'm, I'm an addict of music. I'm completely crazy about music. Do you have passion for music? Yes, I do. <laughs> I have a passion. I mean, it's more than a passion. It's an addiction. It's... Um, Music really defines everything that I do, and I would say it's my greatest love after my family. Music is, is you know. So I would say, if you said, "What am I?" I, I would say, I always say, I'm a musician. I would not say violinist. I would not say writer. I would not say festival director. I would not say radio producer. I would say musician. And with music, I get to do these things. I get to run festivals. I get to uh, create projects and you know do wonderful things. But I get to do all of this because of music. Mm -hmm. So it's very simple, I'm a musician. That's what we wanted to know. <laughs> And the last question. What Daniel Ho hopes for? <laughs> uh, I hope for um, peace in every sense. Peace between people, peace 
for all of us in our own minds. Um, you know, this world is very fragile. And I think the worst thing we can do is um, to kill each other. So uh, I just hope we can all find some kind of peace, whatever that is, whatever that means, okay. like this or some kind of peace on the very short time we have on this planet to enjoy every second. Did you hear? <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you very much. It was a great pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Photo, photo. Can I have a photo? No, Я надеюсь, вы прониклись духом волшебного места и открыли для себя что-то новое. На канале Music Passion вместе с Катериной Соколовой вы можете посмотреть ее видеоблог о фестивале. Подписывайтесь на наш канал и наши соцсети. С вами была Светлана и мои кардиологи. Продолжение следует.